There has been some debate over the Hebrew word yom in Genesis 1, which is typically translated as day in our English Bibles. Some argue that yom can sometimes be translated to mean vast ages of time. Those that argue for this usually do so to support their belief that the beginning of Genesis was meant to be read as poetic, figurative language rather than as literal history. Genesis 1 to 3 being figurative allows for the possibility of God having created the universe through the means of evolution. This is a favorable view by many Christians, as it would make the Bible appear more respectable and credible to a culture that largely believes that the world as we know it became that way through macroevolution. But if God created the world in six literal 24-hour days, then there is a contradiction between the Bible and currently popular scientific opinion. To answer this question, I will be summarizing three separate academic journals by evangelical scholars. In the journal article, Importance of a Literal Interpretation of Genesis 1-11, to Sean Greer presents arguments on both sides of the Yom debate. On the one hand, Yom technically allows for the possibility of meaning vast ages of time. However, he admits that this only occurs under certain circumstances, and is more of the exception rather than the rule. Greer presents several arguments for the literal day position, such as the fact that every single single one of the 410 instances of yom used alongside a number refer to it as a 24-hour period. Additionally, the 38 instances of yom alongside evening and morning always clearly have the literal reading in mind. It is quite striking that both of these parameters are present in Genesis 1. Additionally, plants were created on day 3 while the sun was created on day 4. If yom means long periods of time in Genesis 1, then plants would have needed to to survive for potentially millions of years without any sunlight for photosynthesis. If Yom is a 24-hour period in Genesis 1, then one day would be a very short amount of time to go without photosynthesis. In How Long Are the Days of Genesis 1, David Livingston asserts several arguments in favor of Yom in Genesis 1 referring to a 24-hour period. For one, why would the author of Genesis choose to use the word yom to refer to an indefinite time period when olam, meaning long age, would be more specific while reducing any confusion? Furthermore, in the 5% of instances when yom does not refer to a literal 24-hour day, it usually has another clarifying word used in conjunction with it. An example of this would be yom tab, which means a long time. When yom does not mean a normal day, the wording around it usually indicates this and leaves it as the only option. Livingston asks why one should not allow himself to be stuck with the short days of Genesis and a miracle working God, and go on from there in spite of the attitude of others in our scientific age. Livingston argues that if the linguistic evidence seems to favor the 24-hour argument, then Christians should not bow to the pressure of many in the unbelieving scientific community. In the article, A Study of the Hebrew Word Yom in the Creation Narrative, Genesis 1 and 2, David David Hansen provides a good outline of the various positions held and the strength of these arguments. He admits that there are four meanings for yom in the Bible. A 12-hour period of daylight as opposed to night, a period of 24 hours, the period of light that began with the creation of light on the first creative day, and the entire six-day creative period. Hansen says that because yom is indefinite for each of the days except for the sixth, some argue that it likely refers to non-consecutive days as a result, while others believe this is an injustice to the Hebrew text. Hansen argues that a straightforward reading of Exodus 20.11 seems to support a 24-hour period yom in the context of Genesis 1. Perhaps the strongest argument that Hansen presents is the fact that all theories, aside from the literal 24-hour period theory, necessitate millions of years of death and suffering before sin has entered the world, a seeming contradiction of Romans 5.12 and 8.22. A simple reading of the text seems to suggest the more straightforward approach. Through surveying Old Testament usage, the evidence seems to point in favor of Yom being a reference to a 24-hour day in Genesis 1. Usually when Yom is used contrary to this sense of 24-hour days, the surrounding language clearly indicates that this is the case. Perhaps most compelling is the fact that any sort of jumbling with the creation week is generally done to insert some variant of theistic evolution, which inserts millions of years of death and suffering before Adam's fall in Genesis 3. Romans 5.12 and 822 are quite clear that death came as a result of sin rather than sin following from death. The repeated use of evening and morning after the account of each day only solidifies the case.